Hey, it's Don, the auction professor here. Today is Sunday, so it's time for another What Sold on eBay. So without further ado, we are going to cut straight to the screen. All right, so here we are. This is the first item. This is an Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, the A&P Company. Uh, card. This is an advertising Christmas card that was given out at their stores. It's fantasy. This one always sells very well. I took 95 on this one. I sold two or three of these, so the price-wise is pretty specific. It's 95 to $115 is usually where I sell these at. Elves, it's really a nice image here in all honesty. This one's been up for maybe four months, just after the holidays. So good sale for out of Christmas season, 95 bucks. National Geographic, this one did sell for $24.50. It has the map, and it's from 1941. So the map adds, probably doubles the value on here. I paid just a few cents for this. I bought a bunch of these. These are usually cheap. The only ones of these that I mess with are World War II era with ads and such forth. The military content's what most people want. Here's some Cinderella's, some uh, basically poster stamps, I would call them. It's from the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. Um, it's just a grouping of the same building in different colored um, printings. So I sold it for 45 bucks for the lot of four stamps. Next one here. Now, this is a circus sideshow performer, Madame Turner. She appears in many of the circus books. I sold this one for 225 bucks. I just threw some price out there. Who knows what it's worth? I turned down a few offers. It's been up for maybe three months, so I'm pretty happy with the 225. I've got almost nothing into it, so let's move on to the next one. Hank Williams, this is Cold Cold Heart. It's just a 78 record. I've got a few more records in here. Again, just like any record, I paid a dollar. I sold it for 25. Almost every Hank Williams record that I get sells fairly quickly and fairly easily. Here's a trade card advertising Lancaster quilts and coverlets. Uh, this one sold for 65 bucks, which I was actually kind of surprised. Uh, but anyway, the violets uh, help sell things too. This one sold fairly well, so I'm pretty happy with this one also. 65 bucks, as I said. Uh, sheet music here. I took 12.95 on this one. I guess they wanted to round it off with shipping. Uh, this is one of those 50 cents or a quarter ones. Maybe even it came in a big lot. This is Ragtime Sheet Music by Cohen, George Cohen. Well collected, even in the condition this one's in, which isn't very good. It's got a corner missing and some uh, basic rough edges. They still sell. People will still play these. These are the only way to get this music here at all. You can't get a played copy of it. It's not a, a known song that I can find on a record. Uh, and the sheet music very rarely shows up. So, you know, even when they're junky like this, I still am able to sell them. Micronaut Parts, uh, 1978 toy. Now, I bought a couple of these sets, and I just take them apart every time I get them and list them in parts, and they always seem to sell. Uh, a couple part sets a month, so I'm making 30 or so bucks a month out of, say, a dollar or so in listing fees total for all the items up. If I have multiples of the same part, it's just a quantity listing. So I'll have, you know, quantity 10. Each bit is for one. So another good one with some toys. Vintage postcard. I took eleven seventy five on this one, plus shipping again. Everything I charge shipping on. Now here is a Carbon McRae. Uh, this is a jazz one. This is Blue Moon by her. Uh, for some reason, all of these early EPs, these jazz blues style like this, end up going to Japan um, to the same couple people. I've got three or four people that buy all of these early 45s, as long as the condition's right. And they'll pay almost as much as they paid for the actual record to get it shipped to them. Again, this one did sell for $24.50, plus they spent almost 20 bucks to have this shipped to Japan. And that's literally the cheapest way that I will ship anything. First class international. I do ship straight to Japan as well. I do not do the global shipping program for Japan. I always ship to them straight. They show tracking to the door. I've never had an issue with a package loss going to Japan. And I've shipped to Japan for 20 years. So it's one of my favorite ones to ship to in all honesty. Just a keychain, just the Junko one. Again, this is like a quarter or something, maybe not even that much. So anyway, five bucks plus shipping. 
Here is an advertisement for the Grand Union Hotel in New York City. This one I took 25 for. I probably would have held out for a little more, but I've got two of these. So I'll put another one up now that this one's gone. Again, 25 bucks. Fourth of July postcard. I took $24.50 on this. I had a small sale on it, so no big deal. I was happy with $24.50 out of this. This was a dollar or less, as typical almost every one of my postcards are. Here's another postcard. This one I took $40 on. This is Dudley Murphy's Holiday House in Malibu. Most any of the Malibu ones like this do do very well. 40 bucks. it's a chrome, too. So it's more a 50s or newer postcard. You can pretty much tell by the looks of it. Rather interesting. It'd be a nice place to stay, in all honesty. It overlooks the water, so rather nice one for 40 bucks. Another sheet music, Everlove and Blues. Uh, another interesting topic. I took seventeen fifty on it because of Cupid, I'm sure. I should have had Cupid in the title. Uh, it's a little dark, too, but it's it sold, so I guess I'm happy with that. And again, as I said, we are fixing all of our listings with darker or dirtyish images like this, so this would have been fixed in the next couple of weeks if it hadn't have sold. Uh, here's a lot of Spanish Latin records. Sergio and Nostroza. I'm not sure if that's pronounced right at all. I, I'm not going to try it again. But I took 30 bucks on these. They were These were up for a little while. You never know what these foreign ones are going to sell for. 50 cents a piece I paid for these as well as a whole bunch of other foreign ones. Most of the time, the foreign ones I can get relatively cheap and still take a chance. And they usually sell for decent money. Uh, foreign ones, you can always tell by that center. This is a 45 with a 33 built-in, basically, inset um, adapter for it. So you'll see those with that broken out, or you'll see ones that have four points instead of just those three. Some of the British ones actually have a triangle in the center that you could bust out if you didn't want it. I'm fine with the 30 bucks. I have a dollar invested into it. Now, here's a Marvel comic. Uh, this one I took 225 bucks for. These ran from, say, 145 to 315 bucks uh, for this exact same one. Now, there was somebody who had a slabbed one, a CGC or something like that, uh, that he couldn't sell, and he was trying to get like 350 or 400 I think, for it. So I'm happy with that. I paid a dollar for this. This is one of those titles that most people miss. It's a Marvel comic books, and it's a sci-fi. Most people think it's romance, but it's romantic tales of fantasy. Um, some of the covers are painted covers. They're all fanciful. Rather interesting in my book. I was happy with this one. Rather happy when I saw this for a dollar. Uh, it's not something that I usually find for a dollar. Any issue of this is worth a few hundred bucks uh, from what I see. And if I'm not mistaken, Stan Lee actually did some of the artwork in this one uh, as well. So rather interesting. 225 as I said. Postcard, again, I think I took... 1750 if I'm not mistaken, on this one here. Just the inside of a terminal. Now, here's a 78. Now, this is a different kind than most you will see. This is a standard disc. The hole in the middle there is much bigger than any other that you will find, and you will need a special spindle or a special spindle adapter, which I've never seen in my life, to play this. You could rig something up, I'm sure, uh, but it's just complicated, I would imagine. Uh, and you can see most of the one-sided ones like that have this, whether it's RCA Victor, any of the brands, the one-sided ones usually have an embedded label on the back side of it. It's usually what you find. This is a standard, just about 10-inch 78 one-sided disc from about 1915, 1920-ish, I would gather. Maybe a hair earlier, like maybe 1909, 1910 at the very earliest on this one here. Now, you'll see dates on it up there, 1902. I would say this was pressed later than that. Here's another lot of eight of those records. I sold these eight for 50 bucks. I paid 50 cents for these. Usually these standard discs I pay less for because you can't play them. I can never play test these uh, just because I'm not going to mess around with trying to get it on there and mess up a, a needle. A needle for a record player costs a few bucks, 30 to say 100 bucks for a decent needle, depending on your player, of course. So Next one's a promotional item from Ked's Shoes. It's a shoe line. Bob Dylan's on this one here and that's why it sold. This one went to Germany, uh, just, I'm sure, for the Bob Dylan aspect of it. Dave Clark 5's on here also, Bobby Vinton. It's a promo. I've had a couple of these in the past. I usually get
get about 20 bucks, and I literally put this dead at what I usually sell them for, and sure enough, gone again. Now, here's a roller skating rink. This one, somebody sent me a $25 offer, and I sold it straight out. California, I wasn't worried. I knew it would sell. I just let these ride. I sell a roller skating label probably every two or three days on average. Every two or three days, all year round, minimum. Let's move on to the next one here. Next one's just an advertising card um, for a stage show. This would have been handed out at a show for the most part. Sometimes on the backs of these, there'll be a ticket. Unfortunately, not this one. Had it had a ticket, I might have got 125 out of it. But 65 bucks on this one, so I was pretty happy on it as well. Uh, it's only been up for a little while by the number. Maybe less than four days, I would gather. And the last one here are from some paper, what would be called scraps. I bought a huge assortment from an estate sale from a Japanese American, and there was a ton of Asian-inspired artwork and pieces. These are every bit from the 1870s or 80s. I had a bunch of these. I've split some of them up because they were attached still, and I made a random lot with different figures instead of including the same figure. So I got maybe 15 or 20 of these lots. This person bought three lots for almost 60 bucks. Again, I just throw some random price out there. I hope to get at least a third of the price on almost every one of these types of items. These are just small, little, tiny cutout pieces again. So, And these all went to the same person. This week, too, I had, I think, six big purchases. The last big purchase was 17 items going to the same person. I had another person that bought religious items that, that settled up for 12 items all at the same time. This one is three. And some days, as I said before, I'm selling maybe half of my items to the same person or a couple of different people. My rate of return customers is almost up to 35% right now, so I can't complain. But that's what I have for you. Well, there you go. There's some more items that we sold this past week. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.